Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Just the Little Leagues Podcast. I'm your host, Trevor Morton, and this is WWE Week in Review, Episode 6 of Just the Little Leagues Podcast. We've got a crazy episode for you today. Six championship matches, the in-ring return of Jimmy Uso, and much more wild stuff this week. This is Just the Little Leagues Podcast, and you're watching WWE Week in Review, week of October 7th. Disclaimer, there are many parts in the shows that contain me writing a lot. Welcome to Monday Night Raw. There were two championship matches, and we also had a classic Donnybrook. But this week was the start of two-hour episodes of Raw, meaning every show is now two hours long. Opening the show was Sexy Red for some reason. I thought she was just on NXT this week, but they showed her and most literally went straight to a video recapping Bad Blood. But then CM Punk properly opened the show with many band-aids, wrappings, and a thing on his wrist. And he said, is it good to be not dead on a Monday night in St. Louis or what? I've been through enough this week, and I've been through hell. If we're going to set me on fire, now's the time. I'm in no condition to be here. I'm in no condition to even walk down to that ring. So if you don't mind, I'll address you from here. It hurts to smile, but I had to come here and see you. I'm alive, but I don't feel like it. I'm a winner, but I don't feel like I won. I want to be able to come out here and say that it felt tremendous stepping outside of hell and slamming the cage door behind me. But the way that match Saturday night made me feel just leaves me with a lot of questions. I don't know what the future holds for CM Punk. I told you all that I have zero Hell in a Cell matches left in me, and I was right. I'm banged up worse than I've ever been banged up in my entire life. And as much as I do love you too, I just don't know. I want to thank three groups of people. It's why I'm here. The three groups of people that have a lot more in common with each other than they care to admit. The first one is my fans. The second group of people I want to thank are my peers. The third group of people I want to thank are all the people that don't like me at all. Punk also said that he would like to say, see you soon, but he just doesn't think it's going to happen. Then before Punk could even turn around, Seth Rollins came out with his blasting music. <laughs> Seth also had some talking to do. One of the things Seth said was for Punk to get well soon, because the sooner he gets back, the sooner he can beat him up and end Punk's career for good. You know, I like Seth, but I didn't like what he said there. You know, I didn't, I didn't like it. Seth also said how things are crazy right now. He also noted how Cody teamed up with Roman. Seems like everyone who liked Cody before doesn't like him so much now, except Randy. Seth said he is back to destroy Bronson Reed. Seth finished by saying Seth Rollins, Bronson Reed, one-on-one, and that Bronson can name the place and the time. But this time, Seth would be expecting him. But what Seth wasn't expecting is Jey Uso to come out, as Seth was soothing in his music. But continuing from that, it's Jey Uso versus Xavier Woods for the Intercontinental Championship. Sorry if my voice sounds a little weird. I, I woke up two hours ago and I had eight hours of sleep, which is not a lot for me. I like to sleep, guys, especially when it's the weekend. Obviously, Jey isn't losing his title 14 days into having it. I don't know how long Jey's going to hold the title, and I also don't know who's going to take it from him. But I do know it's going to be a while before Jay loses it. But as I said before, Jay did win the match to retain by hitting Xavier with a super kick as Xavier was jumping down onto Jay. And then an Uso splash. Jay was trying to hype up Xavier even though he lost. You know, show good sportsmanship. Jay tried to dap up Xavier, but Xavier just stared at Jay with a face of anger and left the ring. Then as Jay was getting down from the ropes, Braun Breaker ran out and speared him. Kofi was trying to help Jay, but then Braun speared him. Then Braun ran around the entire ring and speared Xavier. Xavier didn't even do anything to Braun too. But then Braun went back into the ring and speared Jay a second time. Then there was an awesome Rhea Ripley promo video. Of course they put it after Jay. (laughs) Rhea said that she should have known Liv was going to weasel her way out of bad blood with the championship. And that Liv is continuing to prove she can't beat Rhea all by herself. And now since Liv brought Raquel into this... All she had done is guaranteed another beating and delayed the inevitable. Which is what? We don't know, but I think we also know. Taking back her Women's World Championship. Because technically, she still hasn't lost it. Rhea also said Liv needs Raquel, and that Rhea will just need to go through both of them. Then yet again, we saw the fiery, ashy PFR. 
and I still don't know what it is. Then we saw Braun Breaker backstage getting asked why he just did that to Jay in the New Day, but Braun just walked away. Then it was time for a good old-fashioned Donnybrook. Before the match started, we saw backstage Miz talking to Karrion Cross. Miz said that he did that for himself, and there's no Miz in Final Testament. Then our truth came over to Miz to tell him that he forgives Miz, because obviously Miz was confused and thought Truth was still in Judgment Day. Silly Miz. Miz then said that Awesome Truth is over, and our truth responded by saying that Miz did that on purpose? Their kids played together. Truth thought him and Miz were brothers. Very sad. Next week, it's going to be Miz vs. Our truth I already missed the WrestleMania 40 Awesome Truth. Why, Miz? Why? Going back to the match, obviously Sheamus is going to win, because if he can use weapons and it'll be fair between him and Butch, and Sheamus is just better than Butch, so, um, there's a clear winner here. This match got crazy, though. One time, Sheamus took Butch and climbed on top of the wine barrels, stacked like a pyramid, and Sheamus sent Butch and himself through two tables. Doing that actually cut Sheamus' elbow and it was bleeding for the rest of the match. And it was like a big, big one, too. But Sheamus and Butch fought hard and foul using weapons and some crazy hitting moves. But as I said, in the end, Sheamus did win. What he executed to win was a bro kick. The crazy part about this was Sheamus' hands were zip tied together, showing Sheamus doesn't even need hands to beat Butch. You a Butch. Then we saw a video from earlier today of Judgment Day arriving in the parking lot. When Jackie Redmond tried to interview them and asked Liv about Raquel's interference in her match, Liv said that she still has Dirty Dom, she still has Judgment Day, and she still has her Women's World Championship. And she is the only person who still wins when they lose. Then Jackie tried to ask Raquel a question when Liv said that she thinks that all the time they have for interviews is up. But what Liv can say is that they are moving on from Rhea Ripley and focusing on Nia Jax at Crown Jewel. When Dirty Dom said he wanted to leave... And remember, this was before the show even started. So, they left before the show started. Why even show up at that point? Backstage, we saw Adam Pearce talking to Ava about NXT when all-ego Ethan Page showed up. Ethan, get off my gorgeous Monday Night Mommy screen. And Ethan was complaining to Pierce about how Punk cost him his title. Blah, 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 I'm a loser, blah, blah, blah. You know, normal Ethan Page stuff. When Pierce said, I didn't appoint him the referee, she did and pointed to Ava. Then Ava said, Hi, it's me, your boss. Listen, I'm so flattered you came all the way to St. Louis just to complain to me, former champ. As much as I would love to hear you yap like I do every single week, I'm off the clock right now. And Ethan said, Then why are you here? And then Sexy Red came in and greeted herself to Ava and Adam Pierce, and then tried to shake hands with Ethan, and then Ethan left, thankfully. Then it was a 10-woman tag team match between Alba Fire, Isla Dawn. Then it was a 10-woman tag team match between Alba Fire, Isla Dawn, teaming up with Sonya Deville, Zoe Stark, and Shayna Baszler against Kaden Carter, Katana Chance, Zelina Vega, Natalia, who I'm surprised to still be here, thought it would be like a one-night thing, and Lyra Valkyria joins the group. I don't know who was going to win this because both sides had some really good fighters. Almost right at the start of the match, literally everyone was fighting each other. And there was, like, no one standing up except Natalia and Kaden Carter at the end until someone got up and attacked Natalia. But the winners of the match was the team of Lyra Valkyria, Natalia, Zelina Vega, Kaden Carter, and Katana Chance. Which is a good ending, because I don't like Pure Fusion Collective or Unholy Union. So, yeah. And now, time for the main event, Sami Zayn vs. Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship. I'm a Sami Zayn fan if you follow me on TikTok at Teo Dustings, you would have seen the video I made before this match saying, let's go, Sammy! Sadly, in the end, Gunther got the win by holding Sammy in that iconic sleeper of his for so long. So long, he got down onto the floor, and all he needed to do was hold on and keep Sammy away from the ropes. But Sammy fought well in this match. One time, Gunther hit Sammy with a powerbomb, and Sammy got out at one. It was great to watch, too. But Gunther still won, so yeah. But when Gunther got to the entranceway, Cody Rhodes came out and came face-to-face -face with Gunther. Then the show ended. But some of next week's matches are Kofi Kingston versus Braun Breaker. And Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair versus Io Sky and Dakota Kai for the Women's Tag Team Championship. Okay, well it's two matches, not some, but... And now you know what time it is, it's Smackdown time. 
Big Show, he had two championship matches, possible return of The Rock, maybe Jimmy Uso. But biggest question of them all, how will this new and terrible bloodline be after losing at Bad Blood? Opening the show, a guy we haven't seen in a while, Jimmy Uso. And we learned that Jimmy Uso will be going one-on-one against his little bro, Solo Sikoa. And he wasn't wearing his no-eat shirt. Hopefully he isn't against his twin brother still. But right now, Jimmy is out to talk. And what he's saying is he was talking about how annoying it was that Solo put him on the shelf for so long. And was such a coward, he had to jump Jimmy from behind to do it. Jimmy said he plans on doing what he's been doing his whole life to Solo. Jimmy plans on kicking his ah. Roman's music cut him off, thankfully, so I don't have to say that. Roman is here, and he doesn't seem so annoyed now, so distressed. Once he was in the ring, he put his hand out, signaling Jimmy to give him the mic. Roman said, your OTC usually likes to run it systematically out here, but tonight we're going to change things up a little bit. Greenville, South Carolina, join me and acknowledge him and put his hand out to Jimmy. We love Big Jim, guys. We love Big Jim. Roman continued talking. He said, I'm the tribal chief, and that means I take what's mine. And for four years now, that's exactly what we've done. We've took what was ours. We had it all. I don't like where we're at right now. I don't like my position. I don't like being out of control. It's very simple. I told y'all, I'm the greatest of all time, and I meant it. And when we step foot in these arenas, I want y'all to know the goats are here. When we step foot in this ring, I want you to know when we put these ones up, we are the ones. To be honest, Roman said a lot, so it was hard to write it all down. So, yeah, like I said earlier about the whole writing thing. But Jimmy said something after Roman said that. Yeah, but we're not, though. I stand here in the middle of this ring, and I see a chief with no tribe right now. I see you with no Ulafala around your neck. Listen, at Bad Blood Man, I came back because you needed me. You didn't ask. You needed help. Yo, we can get some. I know one person that we can get some help from, Ooze. Roman said, no yeet. This is because after Jimmy said that, the crowd started yeeting. Jimmy said, Oos, listen to me. You will forever be my tribal chief, man. But I'm the only one in the family that still acknowledges you. Then Jimmy left, and Roman watched him leave, leaving fans wondering where the story will go. I'm waiting for one day to hear, Welcome to the Uso Penitentiary! But a man can only dream. After his win last week, Carmelo Hayes got a chance at the United States Championship, and that's happening right now. I swear if Melo wins, I'm going to be so mad. But just within the first few minutes, you know Melo's losing. But for some reason, Andrade's out here, right near a timekeeper's area. But it didn't bother LA Knight. He kept going at Melo. We came back to an ad break to see Andrade now sitting at the announcer's table, just not announcing. At a time, it looked like Melo was going to win after he countered a BFT, but he wasn't able to get the win. LA Knight obviously retained with a BFT, and Melo better not blame it on Andrade, because Andrade kind of helped him at one point in the match. LA Knight wasn't distracted by Andrade, and Melo hit a cheap shot onto LA Knight. And who else is wondering where Logan Paul is? He has been gone for a while, and he added some nice stuff to his story, so I'm not as excited as him coming back as I was for Jimmy and other people coming back, but... I'm looking forward to his return. After, backstage, we saw Jimmy Uso walking when he stopped when he saw Cody Rhodes, where Cody said thanks, and Jimmy said to consider it a favor, but not to expect any more of them. Then Cody warned Jimmy about Solo. Jimmy said, family business, and it looks like you're handling business on your own. Respect. Nice to see them not in each other's throats still. And up next, giving us back-to-back championship action, NXT superstars Lash Legend and Jakara Jackson go up against the women's tag team champions, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill, for the gold. But during Metaphor's entrance, before they even got down to the ring, someone beat them there first, Kevin Owens with a microphone. Because why else would he be there? To fight them? No. What Kevin said was that he was specifically told not to go there, and that is crap. People were asking him why he turned on Cody Rhodes, and that Cody Rhodes turned on him. Kevin also said that people think he's in the wrong for what happened, and then Cody Rhodes came out. Sadly, no entrance music, though. He just kind of walked out. And he was trying to go to the ring, but security was holding him back, and even Randy Orton came out to try and reason with Kevin, but he only joined security in holding him back, until Kevin hit Randy in the face with his elbow, 
Then Randy retaliated by hitting Kevin with an elbow, knocking Kevin to the ground. And Kevin exited the ring, looking genuinely scared. And it seems Kevin Owens has lost all of his friends. Don't worry, Metaphor still getting their, their title match, though. But watching the match is Piper Niven and Chelsea Stinky Green. Even Michael Cole called her smelly, so, like, it's not just me, guys. Also, she called me stinky first, so I think it's karma. Metaphor started the match in control by attacking Jade and Bianca from behind, but I don't think they will actually end up winning it. It would be weird to have main roster titles on NXT, unless if the Metaphor girls got those titles and they would go to SmackDown. Yeah, this match lasted five minutes. Bianca and Jade retained after Bianca took care of the Metaphor girls outside the ring. Then Bianca and Jade hit Jakara with the kiss of death. Outside, we saw Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, and Nick Aldis at Cody's tour bus. Randy told Cody to get out of there, and he will handle Kevin. Nick Aldis told Cody in three weeks it's crown jewel, and he needs Cody focused, because he needs Cody to win. Randy told Cody he's going to pull Kevin aside, cool everyone down, and that Randy's going to fix this, and he promises. Maybe at Mania, it's going to be Randy Orton versus Cody Rhodes for the championship. Because, you know... Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Then, obviously, John Cena's gonna win the money at the bank, cash in on Randy, and win the title from him. Because, like, obviously, when when um, John Cena comes back, he's just gonna win every title. Up next was the WWE Women's Champion Nia Jax with Miss Money in the Bank Tiffany Stratton. Nia had to say in her... Nia had to say in her ring gear, maybe foreshadowing, who knows. Nia said... As your woman's world champion, I have a very busy agenda, so let me knock this off one by one. I'm here first off to give credit to Bailey. Bailey, you put up one hell of a fight last week. I even broke a sweat. You're a very worthy contender. And just like every worthy contender that's faced me, you ended up on your back, realizing nobody on this planet can beat me. Not you, not anyone in a locker room, and especially not my counterpart at Raw. Liv Morgan. That little girl wants to face your woman's champion at Crown Jewel. Now let me tell you what's going to happen at Crown Jewel. I'm going to annihilate Liv Morgan just like I annihilated Bailey and everyone else. And when I'm finished with that and I become the first ever WWE Crown Jewel champion, as she grabs Tiffany's neck and starts shaking her, she continues by saying, It's Tiffy time! That's when you cash in on Liv Morgan. Then Naomi came out. Naomi said, Naya, you and I both know the championship is still sitting on your shoulders because that little broke-down Barbie of yours helped you again. You cannot win without your little sidekick. And as a matter of fact, she's not even a good one because I pinned her last week right there in that ring, just like I pinned you. Or do you not remember that, Naya? Naya said, do you know what I do remember about that, Naomi? is that it didn't take one of you to pin me, it took two of you to pin me. Now, are you out here to challenge me one-on-one -on -one so I can annihilate you, or are you going to go find a partner so I can take my revenge out on both of you? Naomi said, I'm going to say this to your face right here. I don't need nobody to help me beat you. Naya said, you know what? I'm sick of your face. Naomi said, as a matter of fact, I can beat you right here and right now. Naya said, oh, really? Okay. Well, Nick, all this, if you can hear me, send out a referee because I'm sick of Naomi and I want to annihilate her right now. And make sure it's official. An official came out. Then Liv Morgan came out. What? What the heck? Never mind. It's Raquel. Never mind. It's Liv Morgan and Dom. What the heck? Get them off of SmackDown. I don't need to see them on two shows. Okay. Riddle me this. Why is Liv, Dom, and Raquel spending more time on SmackDown than they did on Raw? Simply does make sense. <clears throat> Liv said, we're going to go down ringside and we're going to watch along with everyone else as you lose your match tonight. Just like you're going to lose to me at Crown Jewel. Yeah, that's all Liv had to say. Actually, no, she said more, but it wasn't very important. But it would be actually very smart for Tiffany to cash in at Crown Jewel because she could become a triple champion. Hear me out. She cashes in during the match, and it becomes a triple threat match. Once the match becomes a no DQ match, this was actually all planned between Tiffany and Rhea. So once it becomes a no DQ match, Rhea removes Raquel and Dom from the equation as Liv watches, and Tiffany and Nia fight each other. And once Raquel and Dom are down, if my knowledge on no DQ matches are right, Rhea then goes after and attacks Liv and removes her from the situation. Then, either by pinning Nia, who is already down because Tiffany was fighting her the entire time, 
or since Liv is down from Rhea attacking her, Tiffany goes to pin Liv as Rhea holds back Nia, making Tiffany a triple champion and winning the Crown Jewel Championship in both the WWE Women's Championship and the WWE Women's World Championship all in the same night. And then maybe that'll lead as a gateway for Rhea to get maybe a title shot for her championship. But that probably won't happen. I don't know if they're going to let Tiffany hold three ch championships at once. So now it's Nia versus Naomi. To be honest, I hope Liv is right and Nia loses. Not because I want Liv to get her way, because I just don't like Nia. But this is not, I repeat, not for the championship. Even though I want Naomi to win, I would be surprised if she actually did. I thought Naomi would lose after Nia hit Naomi with her hip straight into the ring post. And if Naomi wins tonight, she will get an opportunity at the title against Nia. Maybe. Not 100% sure about that. And as Nia had Naomi in position for her iconic sit finisher, Raquel distracted Nia and Liv hit Nia with Tiffany's briefcase that Raquel stole from Tiffany. Then Naomi got the roll up to win. That's a surprise. And while the Judgment Day was standing at the entranceway, Rhea Ripley's music started playing and Rhea came out to attack them. Also, happy one day late birthday to Rhea Ripley slash Demi Bennett. Happy birthday. But Rhea started brutally attacking Raquel. And Liv and Dom ran over to outside the ring. And after Rhea was done with Raquel, she went straight to Liv. And Liv tried to escape to inside the ring, but Nia was waiting inside. Then Nia held Liv as Rhea entered the ring and kicked Nia down and out of the ring. And took down Liv and started hitting her with some heavy hitting punches. Until Dom started coming into the ring, distracting Rhea, letting Liv escape with Raquel and Dom. Maybe what I said before, this is the lead up to it. Maybe, maybe. Then we saw Melo backstage complaining to Nick Aldis. Then Nick said that him and Andrade are tied, so whoever wins that match will become the number one contender for the U.S. title. Then Santos Escobar returned and said that he is seeing a pattern. Carmelo, Andrade. They seem to have a permanent spot in your title opportunity in that line. Why? Nick responded by saying, Well, speaking of title opportunities, I remember you having a U.S. title shot, and you came up short. So I've just been waiting for you to bounce back, Mr. Escobar. Santos responded with, Bounce back? Nicholas, I'm not just talking about me. What about Elector? What about Los Garza? Sorry if I said their names wrong. I'm glad you brought that up, because Los Garza... You have a match against a team, a very special team, that I hand-selected just for you. And take it from me, if you can get through them, then you have definitely proved yourselves to be worthy of a title shot. Santo said, again, Nicholas, how hard was that? You won't regret this. Nick said after they all left, I won't regret it, but you might. Backstage, we saw Street Profits and DIY yelling and arguing over what happened last week as Nick Aldis just watched. But some staff members were trying to rush Nick outside where Kevin Owens was beating down Randy Orton as he laid on the floor. And Kevin screamed at Randy, Are you going to pick sides now, Randy? Then it was time for the main event. Solo Sokoa versus Jimmy Uso. Yeet. Let's go, Jimmy. I have a feeling there's going to be a big ending to this. But let's see. Maybe this match will end clean. But we all know that since it's the bloodline, it won't. Scratch all that, Solo was distracting the ref and Jacob hit Jimmy. And the same thing happened, except this time, Jacob ran into Jimmy. And yet again, same thing happened, except Tongaloa punched Jimmy. There are more times where they did this. What the heck? Which, they were all like all the same, so I don't really feel like I need to say it. You get the gist? But even with all this going on, Jimmy never backed down. Never back down. Never give up. Solo won after Tomatari distracted the ref, and Jacob Fatu pulled Jimmy off the top rope. Then Solo hit the Samoan spike. Then after the match, the bloodline started beating down Jimmy until Roman came out to help Jimmy. But it didn't matter. The 4v1 wasn't enough to put the bloodline down. Maybe at Bad Blood, they cleaned up the bloodline, but not here. Roman and Jimmy weren't strong enough to take the bloodline down. The episode ended with Jimmy sitting in the ring with Roman and the bloodline putting up the one and no Jey Uso. Very sad. Now, personally, I really liked this episode of NXT. I liked it more than last week, so let's get into it than me talking about how much I liked it. Trick Williams opened the show after his awesome win last week, but was so rudely interrupted by Wes Lee since he thinks he deserves a title shot because he beat Zachary Wentz last week. But they were both interrupted by main event Jay Uso. Yeet. But Jay, why didn't you why did why didn't you go to NXT when I was there, huh? You're my favorite wrestler. What the, what the heck, dude? Please come to a show in Orlando and sign my Yeet shirt. 
please. But that was pretty much the entire segment. Then it was the tag team match between Kalani Jordan, Jade Cargill, and Bianca Belair versus Fatal Influence. To be honest, I really only care for this match because of Bianca and Jade, but obviously Jade, Bianca, and Kalani won by Kalani hitting a split-legged moonsault. Then Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade addressed the NXT universe. Cora Jade and Roxanne talked about how good they are and how they're going to dominate everyone, blah, 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 blah. Thankfully, Julia came out with a mystery old friend, but who is it? It's Stephanie Vecure. I don't know how to say her name, so if I got it wrong, so sorry. And they started attacking Roxanne and Cora. Julia and Stephanie made Roxanne and Cora run away. And at the end, Julia and Stephanie held the women's championship together. Then we saw the no quarter catch crew. And Ren said that next week, since Stephanie is finally in NXT, she's going to face her and show Stephanie what this brand is all about. Then NQCC walk into Lexus King. And Lexus asked Charles if there's a type of match that he can't cheat in and Oro can't cheat in. Charlie says there's a type of match in England called an Admiral Lord Mount Evans. It's a rounds type system, like a gentleman's duel. And Lexus says he can't do rounds, but he can't do a gentleman's duel. And asked Charles to talk more about it. But then we go to Tony D'Angelo and Obafemi's match for the North American Championship. For those who know me and have seen the podcast would know that I love Tony. And obviously, I want him to win. One point in the match, Luca tossed Tony a crowbar. But Tony threw it out of the ring because he wanted to win fair. But did he end up winning? Well, the answer is yes. Oh my god, I'm so happy. From now on until I'm done talking about this match, a picture of my of the sign my dad made for when we go to NXT this upcoming Tuesday will be up for those people for people watching on YouTube. At one point, Oba pushed over all of the family, including Rizzo, which is a girl, something men wrestlers are not allowed to do. But as Oba was going for some move, I don't know which one it was, because Tony slipped out and rolled Oba up to win the match, and Tony doing that did not allow Oh my god. But as Oba was going for some sort of move that I don't know what it was because Tony slipped out and rolled up Oba to win the match. And the reason I couldn't tell what move it was is because, like, he picked up, Oba picked up Tony and then Tony just kind of fell or slipped out. But it does not matter. Tony's the champ. We got all we wanted and all we needed. Then it was back-to-back championship action. A-Town Down Under versus Fraxium for the NXT Tag Team Titles. I was expecting Fraxium to win because it would be weird for A-Town Down Under to bring NXT titles onto SmackDown. This match was surprisingly fair, too. And Fraxium put up a crazy fight. I think at the next draft, they are definitely leaving NXT. I also think Oba is going to go to a main roster since he lost his title. But A-Town Down Under ended up losing. And from what we saw, no tag teams broke up. But I thought this was a really cool match overall. We saw backstage Sarah interviewing Ridge Holland. And he said that he ran through all of Chase U. But then Riley came out and hit him from behind. Come on, Riley, let's go, let's go. Up next was Sexy Red's concert. Not too hyped about this. I just wanted to see Randy Orton fight Javon Evans. But Ethan Page saved us. First thing Ethan Page has done that made me happy. Except losing his NXT championship, of course. But Ethan canceled Red's concert. Ethan Page said he wasn't going to leave the ring until he got his rematch clause. But Javon Evans came out because he couldn't wait any longer to fight Randy Orton. But before that, he beat up Ethan Page. Now, Javon's match against Randy Orton was really good. Javon sometimes almost won and got a two count on Randy, which is really good for Javon, saying he is half of Randy's age and also half his body weight. But I really liked this match. Many times, Javon tried doing moves that would hit anyone else like crazy, but almost every time, Randy moved out the way. But Javon was still able to hit Randy pretty well and make Randy kind of stand back for a second and stop. But every time this happened... Randy would repay Javon by hitting even harder. But also in the end, Randy went for an RKO, but Javon slithered out. But Randy ended the match with, to be honest, a kind of weak and not so exciting RKO. Because Randy kind of just picked up Javon and they were both just standing there when Randy did an RKO. But after the match, Randy whispered to Javon that he's the man. Well, that is it for the podcast, everybody. It has been pretty good, but if you liked it, Make sure to like and subscribe. Comment of the week. Comment down below if you think that Tony should have actually won. And also comment down below your thoughts on Stephanie coming to NXT. But if you want to support the channel, become a member. That is down below. And remember the podcast is on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, and also on YouTube, which most of you are probably listening to this on. And if you really want to support the podcast... 
send a super thanks. It is all greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.